Our first speaker joined the facilitators in late 2012, coming from a background in weight training. Rack it! Push harder! Booga booga! Were <laughs> three of his most commonly used phrases. In fact, he often refers to his free Toastmaster years as his unable to write and communicate in complete sentence years. <laughs> he compares his journey to that of the Eliza Doolittle character in My Fair Lady, <laughs> acknowledging his many mentors in this club as well as other clubs, being the Henry Higgins character. He is honored tonight to present on the topic, How to Create Messaging That Stays With Your Audience while putting on display the many gifts working the Toastmaster communication track has brought him. Please welcome Jonathan Eliza Doolittle Dunn. <laughs> that most of you realize that was the movie My Fair Lady. I remember seeing that as a little boy. Little did I know at that time when my mom was forcing me to watch it that that would essentially be my life story. Or well, at least part of one of my many life stories. It was literally 2012. I was in my gym. I was playing ACDC as loud as my neighbors would allow me. I was screaming at the various clients that were coming through the doors. When I noticed a transformation in one of them that caught my attention, one soon-to-be distinguished Toastmaster, Jeremy Udell. And I went up to him, and in the best way I could communicate at the time, <laughs> I said, <laughs> I can't even go back there again. I'm not even able to say, but I was like, what are you doing? It kind of sounded like the Hulk. And, uh, he said, I'm an organization called the Toastmasters. And I said, what in the world are the Toastmasters? And he told me about what we're experiencing here tonight. And Jeremy, from coming to my gym, was somebody who, before you guys have heard my story, that he had heard a lot of my stories. And Jeremy invited me to call Stephen Morgan, and he invited me to do that because he said the world needs to hear some of your stories. And I kind of thought of it as a way of possibly healing. I, I honestly didn't know what to expect. But I called Stephen the same exact day. It happened to be on a Wednesday, nonetheless. And he invited me into a meeting. Here I am. And I really just want to take a quick second and thank Stephen for his warm introduction and also say all of us are talking about growing our clubs. And we always have these cute plans to do it. But I tell you what, I believe to this day that Jeremy's way was the absolute best way. He modeled the Toastmaster way. And when I saw the transformation to him, I wanted to become a part of that. And that's how I'm up here tonight to do with you what Jeremy invited me to do, and that was learn how to give a stellar presentation. And the first thing I want to talk about is a very fundamental part of life. If you want to be great at something, you get a coach, you get a mentor. That's the first part of learning how to give a stellar presentation. That's the only way you can go from where you are to where you want to be. And I remember the very first night I went to the facilitators, I, I, I saw Tony, even though she was a little abrasive towards me, just kidding. <laughs> That's a long-running joke we have. And I said, distinguished Toastmaster. I don't know if Jessica was there that night, but I was aware that she was a distinguished Toastmaster. Stephen was there, who obviously was very talented. And I thought, wow, I can join the Toastmasters for whatever it was, $80 a year at the time, and I can have all of these people coach me. I'm in. What a great and tremendous Value. So the first step of learning how to give a stellar presentation is to not go at it alone. Don't 
go at it alone. And I can go into many details tonight on the many intricacies of delivering a stellar presentation, uh, but in a world where we worship complexity, I want to just leave it to what I consider the three fundamental parts of giving a stellar presentation. And it's why I came up and said, the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain, and I gave my, my gym story. Because we have the structure. The second part I'm going to go into this evening is, of course, you have whatever the content is going to be of your speech. What is it that you want to express? And then the third part we're going to go into is a part I, I admittedly still have a very long way to go in, and that is the delivery. And it was really nice to spend some time with Tony yesterday. She took me by the hand even after all these years and said, if we're going to get this delivery into a world-class fashion. And I know she means it. So real quick pop quiz, what's the first part of giving a seller presentation? Anyone? Anyone? Get a mentor. Get a mentor. And then the three fundamental parts every time you create a presentation. You need to think about your structure. We will go into that. You need to think about the content, what it is you want to express. And then finally, the effectiveness of the delivery of your message. So starting with structure, and this is actually what I'm going to back up to. It's why I came out and I did what I did. You want to think like a rock star. You want to think like a James Bond movie. You want to come out and have kind of a rock star opening. And there's really a few different ways to have a rock star opening, but my favorite way, which I learned from one of my mentors who I learned about through Julian, Patricia Fripp, nine times out of ten, you want to come out and you want to start with a personal story. Because that is emotional, and that is going to be what pulls people in, and that is also where you can kind of give an introduction of what you're going to be talking about. The second way, you can start with a question that the audience will want to know the answer to. And the third way, which I actually considered today, was coming out and saying in the next five to seven minutes, I'm going to share with you the three fundamentals of giving a stellar presentation. But I decided to go with the story part because it's my favorite part. I believe it's the best part. And it's always nice to make people laugh at the end of a long day. And as part of the structure, you then have to think about the body of your speech the meat and the potatoes. Are you gonna use more stories or are you gonna use more statistics? I will tell you, from giving many presentations over the last five years, emotion is what gets people moving. Statistics, while necessary at times, are a little bit boring. In the delivery, are the, uh, the close, you wanna tell them what you told them. And of course, there's a lot of different ways I can go there. But make sure at the end you tie up all your loose ends and you tell them what you're going to, what you told them. And then the content. What it is you want to express. Tony asked me to tell you this, and this is something I learned from competing in the International Speech Contest for many years now. Make sure in your content you do not detract from your message. Look at every single word. Is it as tight as it can be? Does it contribute to the message, or does it detract from the message? And then the third part I want to go into content when you're thinking about what you want to express. Once again, something I picked up from Patricia Fripp. I use the word you way more than I use the word I. Because when I say, you will learn how to give a stellar presentation, there's much more intimacy created there. And you always want to create an intimacy with your audience if you want to deliver a stellar presentation. You don't want to stand up there, I, 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 I. You might just come across as an egomaniac. So second part, content, lots of views, what it is you want to express, and make sure all of your wording contributes to your message. It doesn't detract from your message. And then the last part, delivery. The first thing I want to say, if you want to give a stellar presentation, you've got to practice. You've got to practice. You've got to practice. You've got to practice. I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning every day and I practice my speech that I'm competing with. 
If you want it to be good, you've got to practice. Some other things that you want to think about, eye contact, hand gestures. What am I doing right now? Pausing. Anytime you have a really key point, not rushing to the next one and pausing and giving people time to think about it. Your voice, is your voice conveying the message? Or are you just up there screaming? Are you conversational or do you sound like a preacher? <laughs> and I also think every time I'm gonna give a, a speech, how many minutes I have, and I think about how many words per minute I'm able to speak, and I make sure I factor in my word count because you cannot deliver more than 800 words in seven and a half minutes. So you have to think about all these things when you're giving a speech. So I can go into a lot more details. I actually use this sheet every time I write a speech. Somebody drove into my building yesterday and there's no power there, or I would have printed out a bazillion copies to give you. That really happened. So if anybody is interested in what I'm doing, I will be around after the meeting's up, picking up. I would love to get your contact information, your email, and I would be happy to send this to you. It works very, very well. It's the skeleton I use every time I write a speech. One more time, I got that from Patricia Fripp as well. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> okay.